Welcome back, guys, to a uh, another episode of. Uh, probably, no, it's not, it's not going to be fishing goodness. I'll tell you that much right now. But uh, we've got a little bit of a dilemma with the old uh, vessel. Uh, went out for a morning run, and uh, long story short, I've put a hole in the boat. Now you're probably thinking, oh yeah, it's a small little hole. Um, you know, what'd you hit? Uh, don't even know what I hit really. Cruising along, boosting it back to the boat ramp. Uh, wasn't even much debris around, and my, you know, dodging most of the sticks and logs and stuff. And uh, well, uh, I hit something. Didn't, couldn't see it afterwards. So it could have been a 44-gallon drum. Could have been a pontoon. It could have been just about anything. But uh, let's get under here and have a bit of a look, eh? She's uh, <laughs> she's fairly well uh, opened up the keel. <laughs> I've done, I've done a proper mischief, proper, proper mischief, so I know it looks bad, but I figure, let's turn it into a video, eh? Let's see oh, how we can fix this. Now, obviously, uh, I didn't stuff around, I got back to the ramp pretty quick. It wasn't actually that far from, only a few hundred, probably only maybe a kilometre from the ramp, so I just putted back pumped the subfloor full of water so uh lucky to have the subfloor so obviously she's fully sealed off from the subfloor so that's your main deck and your subfloor sits below that but basically it would have filled with water and i could feel the floor flexing it had pressurized that much when i was on the plane so I'd come off the plane putted back to the ramp and uh <laughs> Got her up on the ramp and she's just pissing out water. So, yeah, but we're gonna go through basically fixing it up, how you patch it up, how you go about turning this back into a usable boat, and uh, take you guys along for the ride. So, it's gonna be a different uh, sort of video. And, well, give it a thumbs up if you. <laughs> like it so far i don't know if you think i'm an idiot drop a comment below oh it happens it happens to the best of us but we're gonna fix her up we're gonna get back on the water within a week hopefully so go pick up some supplies and we're gonna race around to the old man's house and i'll see you in a short minute because you won't have to see all this extra all right let's do it let's get in the car let's go all right Yeah, you're right. I'm worried about me, I'm worried about where the head was going. <laughs> you find any timber? <laughs> Not a lot of timber, baby. Yeah. Ripple the debris off anyway, so we can patch it properly. It's all saturated. No, that's solid timber there. That oh, is, is it? It snapped it off. Ah. Yeah, so it's it snapped the keel off there. Oh, nice. It was bloody hard, whatever it was. Oh, I like it out of it. What are you doing? Shit, this ain't too bad at all, I reckon. Yeah? Yeah, no, I think we fixed her up pretty easily. Oh, that's good. Oh, there's a couple of bits of wood floating around somewhere back there. Oh, nice. That's like a bulkhead there. Yep. That must have blown back over inside it. Yeah. Now towards the front. Proper popped it. 
Okay. That's why it didn't go past there, because the bulkhead's there. Uh, yeah, so it's virtually come through. Smacked it, sliced it maybe. Sliced straight in and hit the bulkhead and then stopped. Just going inside your hull and punch through that bulkhead. Oh, I should have. Just too. Jim and camera in trying to get it up there. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, just down there. Yeah, you're going through the bulkhead there. Yeah, that's the only reason that it, it punched so much water in there. Because you could hear something flexing when you're up on the plane. That'd be that bulkhead. Yeah. Yeah. Never really seen that done before. No. A big hole. Like this is all just us hitting the trail. Yeah. And shit. Yeah, that's just all us. That's all. Well, whatever you've hit, <clears throat> just hit here. Yeah. <clears throat> and shaved it, almost cut through it. Yeah. So it had to have been like a. I reckon like a 44 or something floating. Yeah. Semi submerged. Yeah, it would have had to have. And it's just come back and then cleaned it, and that bulkhead's shallow. Bulkhead's pushed it down and then it's just gone through underneath. Yeah So it wouldn't have done anything by cutting out the bloody deck where we wanted to. No, no it wouldn't have been able to get to that bulkhead would have stopped us. Yeah But that's okay because you can foam fill that Yeah, and it's not going to foam. Not well, it's only out. a small cavity. Yeah yeah, the cavity doesn't go up high, does it? That's it there. Yeah, that's the chamber underneath. Actually, this is the chamber underneath where the anchor well is, isn't it? Yeah. Can you feel the uh, screw cap? Or is that further up? Already it's pretty ugly back to here. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll just glass all the way up to this chine and use that chine to blend it in. Oh yeah, make it look a little bit more seamless. So we're just going to take all the flow code off this whole area. Yeah. The good thing is too, and because it's sitting on the roller, up. you can just take these two out. No, no, we'll roll it halfway back on the trailer and then tip, oh, the, yeah. tip the end up and drop the trailer head to the ground. Yep, yep. So the boat will be sitting up in the air. We'll be able to work on it like that. Oh yeah. That's not so bad. Yeah. But this with your keel inside. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly like that. Yeah, like that was shooting your heart. Mm. And what was left of inside of it. So that's not bad. That's what. 30 something years old timber because yeah. we never touched that 15 years ago when we pulled it apart. No, it'd be 50 year old. 50, yeah, 50. 70s, wouldn't it? Mm. Oh shit. That's getting old. It's a good bit of mat that, you can use it. <laughs> you know, it's bloody hard, whatever you get. Yeah. Damn it. Oh well, there we go. <laughs> it's a good look. Bloody, uh, yeah, a little bit, of, a little bit sketchy, isn't it? No, that's all right. It is what it is, you know. That, that happens. That happens out on the water. You just got to be careful. You just got to, you know. It doesn't matter if you know your vehicle. Vehicle it doesn't matter how much you know your vessel, or how much you know the waterway. Well, sometimes it's just stuff you don't see. And. Uh, we all do, uh, we all have accidents, so. Main uh, moral of the story is nobody's hurt, I'm perfectly fine. Yeah. A little bit of a bump up, the old rectum, the old anus. Uh, when I did hit it, it gave me a little bit of a shock, <laughs> but didn't knock me out of the boat or anything like that. Yeah, 
So we've got the boat nice and high. We've actually got the, um, the transom and that sitting on a couple of timbers back here. She's our full bush mechanic spec here, so transduce is off the ground, which is good. Nice elevation. Get the fan cranking so we can dry out some of that saturation. So the foam and the uh, fiberglass actually stick with the resin adheres. Put a heap of cardboard over the keel, or where the keel's supposed to be. <laughs> Mould it, poke a couple of holes in it and just fill it full of foam so that we can get a nice layer of glass over it. And then, well, sorry, once the foam's gone hard, what we then do is fair it back so that we can match that hull match the shape of the hull and then glass it all up with lots and lots and lots of glass and bring it right up. Oh we found a lead. <laughs> so, um, dry her out. But no this this is quite fixable. Very curious as to how it just cut. Yeah, cut and then blew out the front of that. That's weird, eh? It's just saying off like the rim of the 44. Yeah, rim of the 44 is just, it's come over, curved, and it's just straight up smacked yeah. it, cleaned it. We could see it. But there will be something like that, but yeah. because it's so smooth, when you hit it, yeah, you've just driven it down into the water. And bounced over it. The yeah, legs yeah, bumped it, it but yeah. Or you may have finally popped it. Punched, punched, and <laughs> got the last bit of air out of it. Oh, doing, doing the river a favour. <laughs> but yeah, we'll, we'll be able to virtually just, I reckon, just bloody yeah. clean all the flow code off from there. Yep. Around like that. And then just keep building this up, maybe yes. Yeah, make it bulbous bow. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But yeah. when we shape the bone back, shape it back very short and just keep putting build ups here. Yeah. Spin foam and cardboard. We're gonna taper up and uh, try and get a bit of shape back into it. Set this up. Oh, perfect. I'm not cutting myself somewhere nasty. Mm hmm. Hope not. Fingers crossed. <laughs> penis, is, <laughs> penis is crossed. <laughs> no, he wants a Stanley knife to the nutsack. Definitely not going to be uh, pleasant. Uh, yeah. How would you title that? My dad cut his penis while fixing the boat. I had to get a few views. <laughs> Just out of curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on a minute. How's he done this? He's supposed to be fixing the boat. What's he doing cutting his dick off? Uh, Alright mate, you're all fixed, ready to go. Yeah, sweet. Nothing like a band-aid fix, um, link in the description on where you can get the cardboard. Uh, normally Vizzy I think would have something or uh, you know, if you go to a fruit and veg shop, maybe the box that you get the fruit and veg in, you could probably just cut that down and tape it on. Um, as for uh, watertight, well, you just got to use race tape or uh, whatever sort of duct tape you can apply basically. Uh, next best thing, zip tie, if you just zip tie it to the hull. <laughs> Uh, nobody do that, that's a very silly idea. You gotta, we're doing this so we can fill foam up through this little hole. Pump it full of foam and then we're gonna fair it back, fill it all this off and uh, give it a shape back to it. Uh, always be careful when using box cutter. Yes. You definitely. don't wanna cut a finger off. No, you yeah, never got that. It's no good. Also watch your head on the boat because that can be a, an issue too. So if you're doing this at home, which I highly doubt anybody <laughs> doing this at home. 
I'd say, I'd say most people are probably getting someone else to fix their boat or they're just giving up and going, well, let's just sell it. <laughs> but no, here at uh, Chris Vegas Fishing, we're, uh, <laughs> we love band-aids and uh, this is more than a band-aid. Yeah, to those of you that may be new to the channel or thinking about getting into fishing, this is one of the possibilities that can happen no matter how skilled you are of an operator or how not skilled you are of an operator of a, of a vessel. Submerged objects yeah. can punch your hull. Yeah, and if you're in an aluminium tinny, well, I'd, I'd, you'd be at the bottom of the river. Put it that way. You'd be quickly getting the sander and your rods and you'd be swimming ashore. <laughs> but no. Lucky we had the uh, the subfloor separate from the, from the top. It, that's why you do it. This is why you buy fiberglass right here, so you can patch it up on a weekend when you're supposed to be going out crabbing. Well, some of the aluminium boats they fill under deck space with um, foams, yeah, and buoyancy. Well, they'd have to. Yeah. The bigger ones, they wouldn't. Yeah. All right, fill her up. You. Oh, you're the expander fan, foam I'm expert. the expander fan. Expander foam expert. <laughs> I'm a tool. Damn. Looks fixed to me. It does look fixed. Well and truly. I don't think we need to uh, carry on anymore. We're good. Let's wrap that up and uh, we should put glass over the top of that. <laughs> hey, where's my phone? I want a photo of that. Yeah, it does look pretty crispy. Where's your phone? This you my phone. I'll take that. Twister. Oh, nice and cozy. Right. Definitely buy this from your local Bunnings. Or if you if you've got a workplace that also has it, that's also really good. Very handy. Alright. You shake that. How long are you supposed to shake it for? I should probably read the instructions, shouldn't I? This will get deleted out future, Josh, if you could. Well, you reckon jam one full can in there? I reckon jam one full can in there and see what happens. <laughs> okay. Do it. It doesn't Do it. really say how much it takes. 500 mils is the can. So 300% would be... 3... 1.5 litres. Yeah. That should be... Oh, two cans, maybe. Better shake up the other can and prep it too, so you can just jam one in after the other. Yeah. Which if you pass me the other can, I can start, I can start doing that more. Yeah. How many minutes is 30 percent? Oh, it's a few minutes. Now I find two hands works really good. Or if you've got two cans, you can just do it alternating. And it looks like you're sort of rowing or... All right, let's start jamming it. Well, the can's once you open it, isn't it? Yeah, it's got a four week use if it's stored correctly. <laughs> oh, good one. I did that. <laughs> Probably a bad seal. half off maybe. Yeah, I think there's something wrong with it. My buddy. There. We packed it. We 
creamed it. And that should expand over time too, so like it'll, 15 minutes later it might be pushing it out, which is fine, because yeah. that'll give us heat. Yeah. We'll fill it that back and, uh, well, we'll let it cure. You can see it's slowly expanding. We'll let that cure overnight and then hook back in tomorrow and start cutting it all off and glass it up and layer it and keep you back on the water in no time. Yeah, don't drop. Day two. Uh, we've left this to sit and dry overnight. She's uh, completely hardened and cured. And we're just gonna peel all this tape off. Basically fill it back and fair it back so that it shapes that hull and uh, we've got something to put the mat to and it doesn't look ugly as such. But I've just gone out, resupplied, uh, got the polyester resin, acetone, catalyst, which makes the, uh, the resin actually go off and then obviously the fiberglass mat. So we will go through a little bit on just, you know, sort of quantities and uh, specific volumes. Normally we just mix it up however and, uh, you know, either it's going to be hot or cold and, you, you know, you kind of got to mix your uh, your catalyst and your resin to the right amount so that it does go off correctly and it doesn't not go off, so, so to speak. But we'll go into that a little bit more. Let's uh, focus on getting this off and uh, starting the repair work, I guess. And so if we try not to take it off a little bit more chunk by chunk. Had a coffee and a port to try and uh, get us in the working mood. Whether that helps, well, I don't know about that. But. That's good. Really worried. We have gloves and safety glasses and all that other apparatus. We don't even have masks, so we look safe while we're fogging glass. Next step, oh, get rid of all this flow coat and prep in the old fiberglass so that we can adhere the uh, the new layers to that foam we've just trimmed up. It's a rough shape of what we need. An extraction fan, I guess, in the background. Just run that line of the hull. Looks a little bit messy at the moment, but we'll clean up. And just go back behind it and up in front of it so that we've got a nice clean surface. Remember it's all the same as prep work for painting. We want to make sure you've got a nice clean surface to start with. And oh, we're going to clean that with a Zek disc which is a fiberglass concrete grinding disc. We picked them up from Bunnings. Yeah, let's take a lot of that old patchwork off there too. Yeah. From that other hole you put in the boat. That wasn't on purpose. <laughs> well, it's gonna happen. The more you use the boat, the more holes you're gonna put in it. So yeah, we just start off, we just do a small patch overlapping the edge slightly. And then the next patch, which will be another double layer, which will come out a lot further. And then we'll just do one patch over the whole area. Yep. Yeah, so six layers in total, and they're just yep. double layers at a time. And that's just folding the mat over on itself. Any more than a double layer and its own weight will start to Pull it fall away. away and slip. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but the main purpose of it is to reactivate that old resin. I'm sure if you go into the length of uh, doing it all yourself, you definitely read the, uh, the can, the instructions, if you focus. But it will give you... Um... Yeah, it's not focusing. It does give you tips, it gives you the directions on how to apply and use your, um, your catalyst with your resin. 
So I won't go into too much detail on that because you guys probably aren't really that interested on it. You're probably more interested on how we're just gonna get it all fixed and how it's going together. So we get a couple of little patches we're gonna put on first, just to try and build up that foam a little bit that we put in. So it's a couple of patches there, we'll do double layers. Basically just sort of to fill these little these little divots. My arm looks super attractive. Fill these divots back here and then we'll start building it up and working it out and blending it. So that's where we're at. Obviously well ventilated area when you're doing this sort of stuff. Fans set up over there and everything's ready to go. Ooh, I'll drop her at the ready and uh, let's see how we go. Make it nice and sticky. up with you when we're ready to put that next layer on in between who knows <clears throat> you don't want any your pockets in there massage the uh, the glass and the resin to remove any your pockets you're gonna have a pocket here because there's a little bit of cavity in behind it. Couldn't get the farm up in there properly. That's got to go on camera. <laughs> That's really funny. Tell the uh, tell the people what we're doing here. Duck taking me trousers on. Yeah, well, when you reach a certain age and belts are no longer fashionable, um, you just tend to let all caution go to the wind. What? <laughs> uh, we're, uh, we're ready for the second layer on Twix's side. So I've just given a little rub back with a bit of coarse paper just to knock any dags or burrs off. And etch the surface again. A bit more mat, a bit more goo. Mix up another batch. And away we go, we'll put this next layer on. How good is it? <laughs> Stubs in, you gotta put them in the club. <laughs> Got me stumped. We'll wet these out, get them on like that, and then the one on the other side will overlap that slightly, so you're gonna wind up with a nice heavy ridge down the guts there. Gotta make it a little bit hotter just because it's cooler, but you don't wanna make it too hot because then it'll go off too quick and it's a Goldilocks sort of thing. You don't want it too hot, you don't want it too cold, you want it just right. Yeah, well, if it goes off too slow, because we're working upside down, the resin will drain from the mat. Yeah. Oh, yeah, once we get this coat on, we'll, um, we'll see you again. You don't want to see this boring stuff anyway. It's helpful, but uh, once you see one or two coats, you kind of get the idea of how it's going to go on, so. Messy. Messy, yeah. We'll get this coat on and uh, we'll get back in. Well, that should be enough fairing. We'll put the uh, third and final lay up on. Just gonna tear some pieces of mat to shape and size. I've already cut a rough cardboard template for the dill. Just marking out with pencil that won't affect any of the resins or anything. Mm. 
and that nice little overlap across the centre there to give a bit more thickness and a bit more strength down the centre. That should take about a half litre for this layup, I'd imagine. We used about 400 mil yesterday. It might take a little more for this one, to cover a bit bigger area again. About a half litre here already mixed up. Got some um, unscented talc here. It's uh, good for blocking the pores, stopping that dust getting into the pores and that. But later on when you wash off, most of the stuff will be on the skin and that. Bit dusty. <laughs> Makes it easier to put the latex gloves on too. <laughs> bit colder today, a uh, little bit of cloud around, humidity's up a little bit. Uh, I'll probably go a little more catless to compensate. You go a little bit too far with the catalyst, it'll have the opposite. It'll stop it either going off or it might go off. It's, in extreme cases, it will combust. I've just had the brush and the roller sitting in acetone overnight to keep it good to go again today. Uh, I'll probably use the brush itself to put a bit of acetone over the um, area there just to reactivate the resins that are there. That's just brushing a bit of acetone over the surface. And just brush a bit of resin over the surface and then we'll start laying the mat on. low spots there, I wanted to build up a little more. There are some good rollers and that to use on the market. Probably when you're upside down may even be better than a brush. If you're using a brush you want to dab more than actual brushing. It's more of a dabbing. Now when you glass an upside down, any of these hairy bits like this, if they're hanging, the resin will run to the end and the weight of the resin will start to peel it and make it slide. So you just got to make sure you brush them all up nice and flat. No bits hanging. And fairly gently with the roller, but you will require a little bit of pressure. Too much pressure and you'll actually push the mat and cause bubbles and slides. Some of the air will be caught between the layers and just want to work it towards the edge gently. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. I can't see any air trapped in the glasswork anywhere. No mess. <laughs> wow. Not the same can be said about the concrete slab. Uh, there is always going to be mess glassing upside down. Probably use cardboard or paper drop sheets. And once it goes hard and that, just pick it all up. Bend it. So we'll be able to fair that back to shape. And then uh, we're not too worried about looks. I mean, he's only going to wreck it again, so <laughs> rough will do. We'll fair it back to reasonably good shape. Put a bit of flow coat over it. And yeah, he'll be ready to go out and break it again. All right, finished product. Apologies uh, for not really showing you too much of this guys, but um, we're in a little bit of a rush here. We want to get back out on the water. So, it's just fixed. No more hole. 
but all we've done is we've just sprayed a layer of flow coat on that last uh, that last layer of glass obviously etched it and everything like that before we've done so and um yeah you probably you know if you'd fair it back and, and give it another coat but we're sort of in a rush to use it but it'll it come up pretty good looks like a patch it's a patch of a boat we go out and hit some more stuff eventually <laughs> things cross we know it that's not too bad we can live with that but uh yeah i don't know if you like the video anyway give it a thumbs up if you're not already subscribed to the channel make sure you hit the subscribe button and um, any questions feel free to uh, comment we can help wherever we can definitely not professionals here by no means Whoa. <laughs> Quick wrap up. If I haven't already told you, if you can see where that damage is, look at it, she's all fixed. Uh, basically, you definitely would normally repair this uh, on the inside out. You didn't know, you wouldn't normally go outside in, but because of where it was and like how hard it was to get in there, we didn't want to have to cut all of this up and pull that out to be able to get down to where we needed to patch it from the inside. So, from the outside in it had, had to be so just what i wanted to add that now that we're home and hair, oh, hair looks a bit scruffy anyway <laughs> hope you enjoyed the video guys uh drop a comment below if you uh, have any further questions on it but uh basically this is the end and we'll see you in the next video 80 20 <laughs> 80 20 that's fishing gel coat flow coat there's a difference those at home what's the difference because i don't know oh, that's ask my dad. <laughs> we don't know the difference but there's a difference <laughs>